Yo, yo, yo. Hey guys, welcome back to another awesome edition of the Best Practice Show podcast. My name is Kirk Barron. I get to be the host here. And uh, I always love CE. I, I've loved it forever. And I'm a CE junkie. So this is kind of fun for me. Actually, it's really fun for me. I get to invite all my friends, all these people I've seen for years and years and years that are great speakers, great influencers, great experts, and I get to bring them to you so that you can create a better practice and a better life. So I want to thank you for showing up and I'll keep bringing it. So is that a deal? Sounds like a good deal. And today I've got a great, great speaker in dentistry, Marty Jablo, who's kind of you know, he's been recognized, not kind of, as the technology expert, the technology coach. And I asked him, I said, let's understand artificial intelligence better in dentistry. And he said, let's go there. So check this episode out. I know you'll love it. And we'll see you soon. Hey guys, welcome back to the Best Practices Show podcast. My name is Kirk Barron, and I have one goal here, to bring you great thinkers, great influencers in the industry to help you make your practice better and your life better. And today is going to be fun because I've got the tech expert on, Dr. Marty Jablo, who's going to help us understand IA in a much better way. We might even cover a whole bunch of other things today. And it's and, AI. <laughs> a, I, A, AI. AI. You know what I'm talking <laughs> Marty, keep me on the rails here today. That's Come on, it. buddy. Okay. I, you know, Kirk, I'll make sure you don't bounce off too hard. Oh, so. my gosh. Well, number one, I'm so pumped to finally get you on. You know, and uh, I want people to know who you are because you are the technology coach, you know? Yeah. So give us a little bio. Who are you? What do you do? So so the quick thing is I'm a general dentist. I practice full time. I get my gloves wet. All right. Um, I do a little bit of everything, but I've been playing in the tech sector sector for a long time. So they call me America's dental technology coach. Um, I'm also uh, chief development officer for seller and consulting. So we pick those tech awards every year that you see in the magazines, or yeah. if you've been to ADA, you know, we've got that big center stage in the middle. Um, and then I consult for a bunch of different companies, you know, bringing products to market and helping product development and testing things and Got a lot of junk in my office too. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, I love it because this is a tough one. You know, I'm I'm getting older now, uh, 25 years of doing this, and the tech is changing. For, I mean, you probably heard this. This is going to be really cliche and blow you away, right? It's changed more what in the last three years than it has in 30 years. So let's start yeah, there. Yeah, I mean things are things are changing. Is it, but it's funny because uh, I did a podcast yesterday, and they were talk. We were talking about. Um, some of the dental schools and you know I, I made a story about how one of the dental schools a very well known ivy league dental school how they were still teaching you know students how to file by hand for endo right. and then he said well that's okay there's one school the guy said that they're still teaching zinc phosphate cement mixing on cold slabs and i'm like whoa, whoa. where are we today Man. so you know i i like to call it giraffe where well, you know we go from jurassic park to state of the art yeah. And, you know, we're seeing things that are coming about now that are starting to move faster. Uh, I mean, there's still some holdouts on digital radiography, if you want to even believe that. They're still taking film. But, you know, we're in the mid 90s or so in digital radiography at this point. But the things that are coming on with gangbusters are obviously intraoral scanning. And that's coming on real strong. And then now what's really starting to creep in is 3D printing. So when we're looking at all these things, um, I kind of say that we're in a, a place now where we're not necessarily doing something new. We're just finding better and more efficient ways to do them. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's kind of like if you go back and, you, you know, we look at technology across history. You know, I always look back to my dad and I go, the amount of things he saw in his lifetime was absolutely amazing from refrigeration 
right. to cars, to planes, to tele radio and television, to all of these things. And then I say, well, okay, so what did we do in my lifetime? And probably the only thing I can sit here and go that was not a refinement, maybe the internet. Mm -hmm. All right. But even that, the internet goes back to the 1960s. All right. But, you know, it really took off, in, you know, in the last 25 years. And with that, you know, we look at it and go, well, okay, Edison did the phonograph. And then we got tapes. And then we got CDs. And now we've got digital and all of these things. But it all goes back to Edison and the phonograph. Yeah. Well, now we're doing a lot of these same things, but we're doing them in different ways. We, you know, we don't use impression material. We use, you know, intraoral scanners. And in fact, a couple of years ago, mine broke. And now I had to take for a couple of days, it was kind of about two weeks. I had to take impressions. Really? And I'm, yeah. And the thing with that was I'm going, oh my God, how stressful is this? Wow. All right, where I was doing this for most of my career and would have never told you it was a stressful thing to do, mm -hmm. it was very stressful. Why? Because I've had a technology that made my life so much easier, and now I didn't have it. Yeah. Now, think about um, if I didn't have my trusty phone that gets me on the internet, you know, what would I do? Yeah. And. You know, that's the kind of thing that you think about. How would I look something up? Oh, my God, I get in my car and I put the GPS on. I mean, from the phone, everything revolves around the telephone. So it's not necessarily new, it's enhancements. Yeah. And then we get into things like the 3D printers where the enhancements really are chemistry. Yeah. See, because not everything new has to beep and buzz and gets plugged in. Yeah, I totally agree. Now, I have so many questions on this. I want to cover uh, a lot of that. The printing, first of all, if you would have told me there's 3D printers, you know, that are coming our way 20 years, I would have been like, whatever, you know, that's not going to happen. Uh, and then the AI thing, like this is, I, I want you to define that first because everybody has their own definition of art, artificial intelligence. And where is it? Like, put us on the map. If we were in the mall and you said, you are here right now, where are we at with AI? Okay, so you know, AI, artificial intelligence, can, goes across a whole bunch of different things. All right, um, if you listen to the ADA, American Dental Association, they call it augmented intelligence. All right, um, but with this is we're we're some kinds of machine learning, and there's a whole bunch of different parts to that, and it's well beyond the scope of what we want to talk about today. I mean, I do a whole lecture, an hour on AI, but or more, but what we're looking at is how is it going to be applied? See, because, you know, like everything else, if you get into your car, all right, you used to put the key in and turn it, all right? right. Now you don't do that. What do you do? You press a button, mm -hmm. all right? But either way, you know what it does for you. You get in the car, you press the button, you hit the gate, you put it in the gear, you press it in, in, away you go. So you don't really care about the fact that there's a V6 or a V8 or it's what the transmission is. For the most part, it's get me from point A to point B and as much comfort and luxury as possible. Agree. All right? But then we also go the other route, which is, oh, I like to drive. So can I, is it a manual transmission? Can I shift that thing into gear? How fast can I go? Right. So it, that's the same kind of thing is that we're looking at different aspects of AI and what it can and cannot do for you. So the first part is, you know, we look at it and what in many cases, the lowest hanging fruit is looking at imaging. All right. And when we look at this imaging, what's the benefit to a dentist? Well, the benefit to a dentist then is being able to have a set of radiographs or have a cone beam or have a, a Panorex and then have the AI look at it with you. It's a second set of eyes. Right. Now, what we do is, in this case, it's kind of group think. If we could take every dentist in the world and get their expertise and put it all together, I think we'd all agree we might have better diagnosis than if we just left it to me as my individual. Right, but how, 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 you know, how much does that actually work? Like the synchronization. Well, it does work. Okay. okay, it does work. So what that is, when you say synchronization, it's not really synchronization. It's teaching the program what to look for mm. all right and the more images and the more repetitiveness and everything else that comes together the more accurate it's going to be right all right if we take it out of dentistry there are many places where um there, there's radiology of the brain and things like that where it's as good as a radiologist 
Wow. Well, what that does is, is it opens it up for other people in places that may not have that expertise to get that expertise. If I'm in some unforsaken place that doesn't have that kind of person available, well, that may mean that I can use this AI to make a better diagnosis than I would be maybe on my own. Yeah. And it also, so when I've used this real time in my office, okay, you know, it might point out areas that I need to look at. It's not necessarily making the final diagnosis. That is still left to me. Right. All right. Takes a human being to do that. Uh, you know, it's complex. But with that, it points out areas that are suspect. Right. And with that, then I can use other data points. See, that's the whole thing. To me, it's all about how many data points can I have to make the best decision possible? Well, the AI is looking at these radiographs and making that determination from the radiograph. Right. Now, that may change based on other factors that the AI is unaware of, such as age of patient, home care of patient, how, you know, is that if I just showed the thing, a, a small incipient lesion on a 12 year old, that's completely different than that small incipient lesion on a 75 year old. Right. All right. And how well they, you know, take care of things. So I, there's a lot of different variables in it. And ultimately it isn't making at this point, it is not making the final diagnosis. It's an enhancement. It's another data point. Right. For you to look at. Yeah. Now, so you're way smarter than I am in like a, by a long shot. And you're also privy to these conversations that I have. So I go to a meeting, you know, a lot of speakers, influencers there. And then we go to the bar and we start talking. And then a young dentist says, you know, I'm going to just throw questions at you that I get and people bring up. And even when I travel overseas, speaking to some study clubs over there, one of the questions comes up is the resistance to the technology because... There will be a day, and I don't believe there will be, that we won't actually need the day. Have you heard this one before? Like, am I giving you? Oh, a, yeah. Yeah, like and how far do we go down this path before we actually don't need a dentist? Let me throw you these crazy questions that I get. What, what, what's your response? A, all right, so I'll give you the, so last year at the ADA in uh, Las Vegas, there was a whole panel discussion about some of this, all right? And their part is that in no near time future will that be the case. Mm -hmm. I thoroughly disagree. Tell me why. Okay? Tell me why. I want to know why. Well, so the why is this, and I've had conversation with government people and everything else, all right, um, both here and abroad. The whole idea is to, to minimize this, the number of dentists, the use of dentists, because dentists are expensive. What? If we can... Yes. Are you presenting a conspiracy theory here? No, like, it's not a conspiracy okay. theory. It's just the reality of okay. it. If I'm running a business and, in, in, and right. I have 10 offices, and out of that 10 offices, I need 10 dentists. Well, those are the probably the most expensive people on my payroll. I think you'd agree. Mm -hmm. Now, if I have 10 offices and I can consolidate things using AI and auxiliaries, and now I only need five dentists. Well, now I've made a lot more money, but from a government standpoint, it's not making more money, it's spending less money. Mm. All right? And so ultimately, do I think it will lead to a decrease in dentists? Yes. Will it be any time in the next 10 years? The answer is probably no. But ultimately, yes, because technology is going to catch up with a lot of things. Right. It won't catch up with abuse, neglect, and all of those things. That right. it won't be, all right? right, and accidents. But what it will do, and, and I've seen some of this, where we're going to have more precision in what we do, all right? And that's going to make a, dis, a, a, a big difference too. If I can place something in a patient's mouth and have a laser drill just out with the very minimum to get things accomplished and then restore it almost in the exact same manner, it's going to be beneficial to everyone, but that may limit the amount of dental treatment that ultimately be, is needed. And, you know, as we've always say in prevention, you know, the smaller we, the earlier we catch it, the better off it is. Right. Well, yeah. And it long term is for the patient. I agree. That's not necessarily the same thing as dentistry as we know it today. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm all for like seeing things better, helping make decisions and all that kind of stuff. I think ultimately you're still going to need the dentist. And when I was over there in Switzerland, I mean, they were 
they're big on having this conversation and they'll say there will never be a day where you'll take the dentist out of the room type of a thing. And so like, I love this debate in here and my sister works in the cardiac unit and she's like, I don't care how good technology is. We're never taking a doctor out of one of these rooms ever, you know? Yeah, you may not take the doctor out of the room. It's the number of doctors that you need well, in the good room. Good point. Good point. Okay. Now, are you are you a baseball that's, that's fan? A big Let's oh yeah, a little bit, a little L- bit, a little bit. Like, I'm more of a you, football guy, but you're more yeah. of a football guy. Like I, I love both of those sports, but you know, one of my favorite things is going to the Brewers games. Like I love it. And okay. then you you hear all this like they're, we're going to take the umpires out of the. game. I'm like, no, you can't take the umpires well, out of the game. I mean, but we've let technology then dictate in that. Right. All right. Now we have instant replays in football. Right. When you watch, when you watch that, you know they they'll go look at this whether the you know the batter swung through. Now that you've got that actually where they have that you know where they put the box up for the see if the pitch is really 100%. in the strike zone. Yep. You know, so they're, don't they're think reversing that, calls in basketball. <laughs> right. Exactly. I mean, you know, the guy that put the shot up at point zero one. Right. All right, and the thing is, you know. In the old days, that was a judgment call. It's yeah. not so much a judgment call anymore. So when we look at that, that's all using technology to get us what we think might be better outcomes. Yeah. All right. But, you know, depending on in, in a baseball game or a football game or basketball game, um, depending on which side you are, it may or may not be the better outcome. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, I have so many questions. I hope you don't mind. We're going to make this like a four hour show. Fire away. Let's no, go. I'm just kidding. I know Ooh. you got to go to concert. Okay. So you are a technology coach. I love yeah. listening here. I want you to coach me. I'm a young okay. dentist. Like Marty, it's it's it actually even for me. I'm 50. It's overwhelming the amount of choices. Mm-hmm. I mean, the investment you're going to make. And I think you would agree like we saw this with Sarek years ago. People went all in, but like it's the utilization that's important. E- Absolutely. I, I mean, it's eBay not the- Look at eBay right now. How many of those things are for sale? What do right. you w- w- coach us through that? So first thing, whenever you're going to implement any kind or want to acquire any new technology, you have to first, there's one important question. What's it going to do for you? Right. Okay. You know, that's, that's first off. And then is there an ROI? Now, not not all ROI is necessarily money. Sometimes dentists need something to kick them in the butt to get excited about dentistry again or something new and different or that kind of thing. Right. So when I look at that, I'm, I, I kind of look at it the same way. But the first thing is, what are you asking it to do for you? Is it going to do make your life more efficient? Is it going to give you better treatment? Is it going to give you better outcomes? What's it going to do? Because if you can't answer that question, why do you need it? Yeah. Well, sales rep told me, <laughs> that's usually the answer. Well, the sales rep makes money by selling stuff. And what the dentist doesn't know, you probably do, is that in many cases, some of these reps make more money than the, the dentist. Well, I hope you they know? take that line out. It's just an extra crown a month. Like that that one, yeah. I think, burns in the belly of well, every dentist, doesn't it? So when we go back in time, let's go back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ship back again to the dark ages. Okay. Most uh, most dentists now, a lot of them don't remember that a crown used to be one hundred and seventy five to two hundred and fifty dollars right. for a porcelain fused to metal crown, right? Semi precious. That's what it was. It was a handmade work of art for every patient. Yep. All right. Well, what we saw was now I wouldn't call it a handmade work of art anymore. It became a commodity. Mm-hmm. And what they used to tell you when they were going to sell you, you know, a Sarek machine. You know, you needed to do X number of units a month to cover that nut. It's double that now. Yeah. They're not triple that now. All right. The price of the machines haven't necessarily come down, but, you know, it becomes, do you want to use that as a marketing advantage where I can do single visit crowns? Right. Does that make sense for you in your environment? And then if that does, then I say that's a good idea then go ahead and make those kind of purchases. Now, we don't necessarily always now for all those years we had, that was the pretty much the only thing in the game. If you wanted to do it, you played Sarek. Right. That's not the case anymore. You know, we have uh, Plan Mecca has their system. Um, now even you have, you, you can mix and match a bit. You can, you know, Glidewell has their own mill. Roland, which some people may not even know. Um, they may know them from uh, playing pianos, but, they are very big in the dental lab space, and you can buy mills from Roland, and much less cost 
than you would maybe serum serec. Um, and pair that with whatever you want to use in terms of intraoral scanning. And then you need some kind of software, which the big one for most people now is ExoCAD. Um, but, you know, you can still have, there's three shape and the Serona still has theirs. And, you know, so you can kind of mix and match with it as to what you want to use. And when we look at that, so that's the point is you have to pick what works for you and why do you do it? So example would be is depending on the cost of your crown, does, can you make enough money to justify the mill? Right. See, I think everybody can justify an intraoral scanner. Mm -hmm. but can they justify the mill? Yeah. The 50 to $75,000 for the mill and the cost of the blocks. Yeah. Because you can get crowns now done. Now, depending on wh what you're doing and who you're doing it with for sub hundred dollars, sub $50, sub $40. What? Yes. That's so crazy. with that, yeah. So with that, you have to justify that purchase. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I can, I can, let's go back to your question. I love how you, you know, you got to ask yourself, first of all, what's the technology going to do for you? Totally agree. And you know, if a dentist is listening to this and they're young in their career, a lot of these are going to be like calculated shots. Some of them might be like, I don't know, what's a layup for you for the most part. Like if a dentist is just getting started, you see high levels of predictability in which that question that you ask gets answered. Like, Dentists pretty much go down this path and they're pretty happy with this choice technology wise. The first one is imaging besides because everybody at this point is going to have a digital sensor or, right. or to go with it. But the most important thing, every room hygiene doctors needs an intraoral camera. Yep. All right. You can go buy one, a mouthwatch. Shofu has their version of that. That's the game. That's a start. Because the patient has to buy in. You want to show it to them. Now, most of my patients at this point, I've been seeing them for years. They trust pretty much everything I say. But with that, I want to show them. Right. I want to show the before and after, or I want to show the decay inside the tooth. Why? It helps justify why I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. And then also from a medical legal standpoint is you can always justify what you did. Right. All right. So it's, it's, it's two prong, but that's the easiest, lowest expense. Um, I, in my office, we use intraoral cameras. We use extra oral cameras. Um, you know, we take a series of, of, of just shots of teeth, face and everything else for every new patient, because I like that as a starting point. So we know what the patient looks like when they walked in the door. Yeah. And, and it's much easier to explain to a patient what's happening when they can see it than on the, you know, practice management software screen where there's just that, you know, the, the illustration versus this is you. And right. then you get the, uh, oh my God, look at that. I hate looking at my teeth, but I, li I like that because yeah it forces them to recognize that there may or may not be issues. Yeah, 100%. Now, again, I get all these questions, Marty, so I'm just going to dish them your way. And I'm 52, so I'm going to date myself really well. And it's the VHS thing. So when VHS things came out, they were $900. Remember that? <laughs> Yep. Now, now you can't even find them anywhere. But I remember my dad in, eventually bought one for like $100. And that was like a big day for us. And it was way better than the $900 one. So when it comes to CBCT and all these other things, a lot of times the conversation is, wait, just wait, because it's going to get more efficient. Do you agree with that? How true is that it, in dentistry? It's, it, the, uh, CBCT is a different discussion. And so with that, the first discussion is back to, do I need it? All right. I'm all in favor of a digital pan. I'm all in favor of because, but that's not necessarily the first thing you're going to do. Right. All right. You know, if you're thinking about it, you know, I, it's, that's not a first step. I would actually, at this point for bread and butter dentistry, I tell you, I'd rather have an intraoral scanner than go to that route because that's something I'm going to use day in and day out and, and get there. Now, when it comes to comb beam, because that's what you asked about, you know, my thoughts are these. The price of comb beam has come down significantly. When I first started looking at comb beams, they were two hundred thousand dollars. All right. There again, you can still get some in that hundred thousand dollar range, but you can still find new ones in the sub seventy five thousand dollar range. There's a handful out there. You can buy a used one, all right, if you need to. 
if you're doing things like implants, third molar extractions, that kind of stuff, retreat endos, well, then I think it's really, really valuable. Right. Um, and with that, you know, when we start looking at it, then we start looking at warranties and image quality and software and all those other pieces of the puzzle. But the first thing I would say is that, yes, I like having the comb beam in my office. The oral surgeon likes it in my office. The periodontist likes it in my office. I've got a group practice, so it's not the same as the small general practice that I had right. years ago. So with that, you have to, again, make that determination. Does that fit in what I need it to do? Back to the same question. What right. do I need it to do for me? If you're not doing any of those things and you're referring out most of those procedures, then you know that may be superfluous. But the interval scanner, uh, you're taking impressions, you're taking ortho molds, you may be doing all of those things, and that's different. Yeah, who says no to the scanner though? Like, because I still feel that I feel there's still some resistance. Do you see that? Um, yeah, I still see some of it, and it's more because they don't want to go for the cost. That's really what it is. It's a cost benefit thing, and okay. there are a lot of older dentists who just, you know, that's the way. I mean, I had a guy that was in my one of our partners. He's since retired, who just didn't want to use a scanner. Hmm. You know what? I was. This becomes the old, this is the way I was taught in dental school, and I'm going to do it till the day I die. They're using um, the seven most expensive words in dentistry. That's the way I've always done it? Like type yeah, of thing? Yeah, that's exactly it. You know, and I like to say there's not a procedure right now that I do that I was taught that in dental school and how to do it that way. Right. The closest is probably an extraction. But the materials have changed. The technologies have changed. That doesn't mean the basic tenants disappeared. It means that we've got better tools and techniques than we did 30 years ago, or as I like to call it, what was state of the art 30 years ago, I look now back at and go, that was pretty barbaric. Yeah. All right. And that was the same thing. I was a young kid out of dental school. Now I look at it and go, okay, I'm doing state of the art and I am actually doing pretty much state of the art, but 30 years from now, what I'm doing today will be barbaric. Yeah, All it's right. amazing. I mean, I've had Uchi on here many times, and he okay. says the same thing about nutrition. He's like, yeah. you know, 30 years from now, we're going to say, can you believe we said that 30 years ago, that that was actually well, helping us? Yeah, I mean, well, we see that in the research and everything else that things change. Yeah. And, you know, what, you know, they told us, you know, eggs were no good for us. Then eggs were okay for us. And then taking this vitamin was good for us. <laughs> and we all started taking it. And now we don't. You know, I mean, I've had enough dinners with Uchi. I mean, I, I've heard the story. Yeah. So with that, you know, we, we have to always think, what's the next thing? Now, the next thing isn't always better. Now, no, everybody doesn't need to be on the bleeding edge like I am. All right. Bleeding edge is not necessarily where you need to be. Yeah. But you you know, when you have that bell curve, you don't want to be at the end of it either. Right. Right. All right. You know, you want to be uh, you know, you want to be dead center, I'm okay with it, but I wouldn't want to be the trailing person all the time. Yeah. And a lot of these people it's because they don't want to spend the money. And you got to remember too is when we look at it, um some of these scanners, you know, are 40, 50,000, you know, between 40 and 50,000 dollars if you buy the ones with all the bells and whistles, but you don't always need that. Yeah. You know, there there are used ones. The last, you know, the like people right now, I'd say, you know, if you want, I have a Trios that just happens to be what I have. I had a Care Stream before that. Um, you know, pick what you think is right for you. And all of these companies aren't are selling both the latest and the greatest and probably the generation earlier than that. And the generation earlier than that may not be so bad. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, you know, so we, we right now we have scanners that are probably from eighteen to forty thousand dollars. Yeah. They for the most part, they all will get the job done. They're all fairly accurate. They all can do things. How well you scan is based more on the dentist than the hardware. Right. What software comes with it matters too. Well, I hear that one. And now they play better. They play what play nicer. Remember, remember right. we had those days where they weren't playing nice with everybody? Oh, yeah. And now we get to go different ways. And now you get to do things that you couldn't do before. Right. Okay. So I like to say, well, how about two visit dentures or one visit dentures? All right. I got a, I got a denture. Somebody cracked it, um, but it's not complete. And we decide we're going to make a new one. I can scan that denture. Yeah. And now I can send it to the lab 
and I say duplicate it and they print it and they send it back to me and I give it to the patient. Yeah. See, I love the, I love the time. The money thing is important, but the time thing, like you said, bleeding edge, I, you know, you're speaking to my heart because I'm a Starbucks guy. I go to Starbucks every morning. I go to the same Starbucks every day. It blows my mind. I went there this morning. I order when I leave my driveway and I pull up to the Starbucks and it's ready to go. This morning I went to Starbucks. There had to be 14 people in line. People that I've seen before. I'm like, they got an app for that. You right. know, like, and one of them in line, I, I tell them all the time, dude, there's an app for that. Ah, oh, it takes me forever to get out of here. I'm like, oh my gosh. And I, I think you got to find your space in there. And you Well, but, but you got to remember we're human beings. Right. And we are not happy unless we're complaining. Whether it's the weather and it's too hot or too cold, whether, um, you know, the food is good or not, whether the, the chair is comfortable or not, doesn't matter. That's we want to complain. That is so, so funny. That's why, you know, when I look at that stuff, here's the solution. You want to take it, take it. If you don't, well, don't bother me, but I'm going to complain about it anyway. Yeah. yeah. Now, I, again, I got so many questions. I want to go back to the AI thing. Like, uh, what All do right. most dentists get wrong when they're talking AI? You're part of these conversations. What do they get wrong Everything. on the whole AI thing? Everything, because they don't even understand it. <laughs> they're I totally mean, the average, off. Like, the they're not even. Because, because the average dentist hasn't even looked at it. Right. So they're not even sure what it's going to do for them or what it's not going to do for them. Here's a perfect example. In a lot of the scanning software, there's AI built into it. It knows to take certain things out of the picture, but they don't realize that. And that's, and that's okay because that's a good use of AI mm -hmm. in that people don't understand it. It just works for them. They don't have to understand it. I'm okay with that. Yeah. But you know, you have to understand that portion of it. You know, we didn't get into the downside of AI, which is the insurance company part of AI. All right, go there for a second. Tell us the downside. All right, so there's some downsides in that too. Um, none of us want to see fraud done. So I think we'll all agree if the insurance companies could use AI to decrease the amount of fraud, that's a good thing. Agree. All right, totally agree there. But there's going to be AI that's going to be used to regulate what they cover and treat. Wow. OK, they're going to look at radiographs and some other things, and they're going to use AI to then determine that this is acceptable or unacceptable. Now, part of that, they're going to sell to dentists as a positive. All right. And you're going to go, well, how are we going to do that? Well, what they're going to do is going to say, if your AI in your office that we've approved says it's covered, it will be. All right. But they're not looking at all the other pieces of that that are not going to be to their advantage. All right, that they're going to go, OK, we can look to see how many of the, you know, they do it now. I mean, I got a letter a couple of years ago from MetLife saying you do too many three surface restorations. And I'm going, OK, should I send them a letter back and go, you want me to do more crowns instead? <laughs> you know, I they, mean, that's, you should have. I, I but I, I'm not even going to get involved in right, that. Right, 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 so right. I just kicked it aside. I didn't care. I laughed at it. And that's it. It's an intimidation letter. Yeah. Okay. Well, and uh, you know, this came up like a lot of the good dentists we coach, they get the auditing letters from the insurance companies. Well, I said, you're going right. to get them because your production, you were producing, you know, 60 or 80,000 a month. And now you're doing a hundred. You're gonna, you're going to hit those numbers and they're going to be outside the normal limits in some respects. Correct. And the same thing is going to apply. What you're saying is actually to the treatment of these patients in some respects. Correct. They're going to be able to go, okay, is this the norm for an average dental practice? And then who's outside of it and in levels that are just, you know, greater than we can assume right now. Wow. So with that, you know, that's, that's to me is a downside of AI and every one of these AI companies are playing both sides of that coin. Okay. All right. We're going to show you how we can help you. And in the meantime, we're going to help the insurance company at the same end. Well, um, I mean, I'm, my answer for that is pretty easy. Like just become as, I mean, you, you don't have to get off of insurance, become, but become way less dependent on making sure it's part well, of your future. Right. Yeah. I mean, and this is a, that's a whole different. Yeah, I, I, we're not even going to go to I that's, mean, a, I, I wait, don't that's, even, that's, that's episode number two with you. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I mean, yeah. I, okay. So with that, I mean, there's a whole bunch of games you got to play volume for, right. I mean, that's just, that's a business management volume so, versus no volume versus what is growth look like? What does not growth look like? Um, 
it, that that's a different discussion. Yeah, and, totally. Uh, different. Happy Let, to have you, but that's not a technology discussion. No, that's no, 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 no. Let's stay on path here because you're you. Okay. I, I'm getting a like. I love hanging out with you, and we can go and we could actually talk about what we have for lunch. We could talk about Kenny Wayne Shepherd tonight, which you're going to go see, and yeah, like I'm how it's go different. See him from the, I actually saw him in the um, in Chicago. In okay. the, do you remember the blues bar that was in Chicago? It had two tunnels. I can't remember the name of it. Mm. I don't remember. Oh, it was amazing. Me. All right, we'll come back. So to I got to meet you in Chicago in a, on a um in January when Buddy Guy plays his place. <laughs> yes. Okay. That you is know, some it, of the best it, stuff ever. You yeah. Know what I, mean? I mean, you know that that's really it. I mean, <laughs> I'm lucky. I've got the Stone Pony 20 minutes down the road. For I actually was just there this morning yeah. walking by. But so I get to see a whole lot of good stuff down through there. Uh, but yeah, you know, we could go see Buddy Guy at his place in January, but. We yeah, you, know, you could drive. I got to fly in. We are. We're going to pick up Ooch on the way there. What do you think? There okay, you so. go. We'll, we'll get him to come too. We'll All have to right. fly in from Toronto. Well, let's go back to the AI thing because I want to. I want to stay on path here with. Um, so I don't know if you're part of that group that goes to Cologne, Germany, to the whole big thing, and it's like yeah, a million IDS. square feet. IDS. I yeah, I've heard I've about it. I've never got an invite, but like it's all. I, oh, there is no invite. You got to go yourself. They're, oh, you gonna, just they're go. not looking for you. Yeah, okay. And it's, so for people who don't know, International Dental Show is the largest dental show in the world. Over 100,000 people will show up to this. Um, it's usually over um, five buildings in Cologne, Germany um, for like four or five days, something like that. There is no education, by the way. Right. Now, right, so now, the reason I'm asking you, I'm going to go down this path because you're privy to that. A lot of those technologies are tests like budding some of them don't even make it to the marketplace like some of this you know um, yeah and so you're oh go ahead so that's different okay what ids isn't that ids is people coming together trying to sell their wares oh okay, all right okay, okay. so think of it as a big de exhibit hall for the dental meeting only it's five times the biggest dental meeting you'll find in the u.s i can't even right? imagine if I can't you think even. chicago's big or new york's big no they ain't nothing because you got five of those two levels some of those buildings I mean, and then you can eat in some of the booths. They make you food. They give you booze. It's it's a whole different game over there. Yeah. But with that, those are just what you're seeing is some of the stuff that's going to come to the U.S. later. Right. Some of the stuff that's coming out of Asia and Europe that hasn't been approved for use in the United States. And it could be two years earlier or people showcasing things that they have in development. Right. So we get to see a lot of that stuff because, they, you know, they're trying to sell their products. Yeah. You know, that's not. It's not an incubator situation. It's okay. it's a big dental dental group, and you don't need to be invited. You just get your ticket and come on board. Maybe I'll so, come with you. You know, and now yeah, if you, there you go. If you the, guys, the only thing, the only thing you got to know, all right, what? it's fine to get there. The rooms are a fortune. Think oh about gosh. four and five hundred, six hundred euros a night. That's crazy. Okay? Well, yeah, here's where I was crazy. going with this. Now, if you guys are listening, you're catching Marty and I on a Friday afternoon, and we're both kind of. I don't know. I, I'd take you across the street, Marty, and just have a beer, and we, we could talk about this for hours. But, like, uh, here's my real question. This is what I really want. You are you get to see a lot of stuff. What's ahead? Yeah. Like, what what are we going to see in the next year, two years, three years? It's anyone's right, guess. So this, yeah, so the, the thing that I think is the biggest game changer is going to be digital printing. All right? Tell us Where, why. Because the cash the, – the chemistry is changing so fast and so quickly that we're able to do things that we couldn't before. Um, where we couldn't make a single unit crown quickly, we can now. Um, partials, dentures, night guards can now all be printed. We're getting to the point where we can print aligners in the office. All right. So it's it's a matter of using this. And now what's going to make that even easier is this. We had a bell curve again, and we had the people on the bleeding edge who took us into this. And now what's happening is the average dentist goes, I don't want to deal with all of the pieces of that puzzle. They don't have to. All right. I can take the scan. I can now email that to a to a lab guy who then produces the files. Right. All right. That now come back to my office that may go directly to my printer. And somebody just has to hit the button. Mm. Now it prints. I've got all of that stuff done, and there may be no turnaround time. Wow. 
All right. Think about scanning somebody in the morning and giving them uh, giving them a denture in the afternoon. All right. This and the control, if you choose to have it, right, to modify things, where you're not just sending it off and hope the lab guy understood what you wanted. You can modify it yourself. Right. So these are, you know, it's just how we're going to use this technology. But like I said, right now, um, there's a couple of different materials, Flexera, Onyx, um, that are changing the way we print dentures. All right. Um, where if somebody said, I love this denture and we all have had that, we've all heard the story of the person who comes in with a box of dentures and none of them fit and they don't like them, <laughs> but there's one that they wear every day. Yes. And it's the one that's 30 years old that nobody else has been able to duplicate. Well, what happens if I scan that and make a direct copy of that? You're a hero. Okay. I'm the hero. All right. And that's the kind of stuff that we can do. The, what I call is we're taking what in many cases the dentistry thought was difficult and impossible and we're making it possible. Wow. One of the things that I always hated doing was, you know, retrofitting a partial denture. Very difficult to do. Not so difficult in the digital age. All right. And these are the things that now we are able to do. So when I when you ask me what the thing is going to be, it's going to be more enhanced 3D printing because the chemistry of the resins is improving exponentially. You know, and I'm not talking year over year. I'm talking months wow. where what's great today, maybe six months from now, there's a better product out there that just blows that one away and we move on to the next one. And that's what's going to be the biggest change. Yeah. Marty, and this... what that it changes how we do all of dentistry because the stuff that we couldn't do, we can. And we can potentially do it at a lower price point. All right. So at this point in time, that's still good for our bottom line. But in the big picture, Kirk, it's going to change how we do. De we deliver it to patients. Right. You know, the patient who may not have been able to afford a roundhouse may be able to this way. Because we can lower our costs, all right, because instead of $100 a unit, we're $3 a unit. Yeah. See, you're okay. calming me a little bit, Marty. You know, I don't, I don't like to see the industry I love so much shift and not, you know, have my friends doing it. But, like, I think you could, if you can calm us in the middle of this storm. The other thing to understand, too, is that – you know, the aging population is explode. You know, it's, it's, we're going to have a lot of people and the awareness of dentistry is growing. So we're going to have a world of a lot of people. And so we, we're just not going to have enough dental providers here in the future. So I think technology is going to be a big piece of, but I want to do this. I know you got to run and I actually have to run too. Um, and I got to get to a baseball game and I know you got to <laughs> yeah. go to a concert, but, That's um, right. I want to have you back and cover some other okay. aspects. Uh, but before we do, I want people to find you. I want people to know who you are. Marty, if I'm a young dentist and I can't make heads or tails of this whole, you know, tech thing, can I reach out to you? How do I find you? Sure. Marty at dentaltechnologycoach.com. You can go to the little crappy website I still have, uh, dentaltechnologycoach.com. Um, and find the blog, dentech blog blogspot.com google my name because guess what if you google marty jablo you'll find a way to connect with me that's facebook that's linkedin that's twitter that's instagram um you can venmo me um <laughs> <laughs> whatever you want to do that's awesome that is awesome buddy well i can't thank you enough for showing up on a friday afternoon to give us some good things to think about so thank you my All friend right. Really it's been a pleasure, Kirk. Look yeah. forward to doing it again sometime. You got it. Stick around for a second while I say goodbye to everybody else. But thank you guys for listening to the Best Practices Show podcast. Hey, if you enjoyed today, do me a favor. Just hit the share button. Share this with your friends. Keep sending us suggestions for things that you guys want to hear. I'll have Marty back. And maybe we'll create a little tech corner. And we'll give you all the difficult questions. You can tell us what's on the way and how to sort this. With okay, I'll let you set that up. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Well, right. until we see you guys next time, keep watching or keep listening to the best practices show. You guys enjoy your day. Mm -hmm.